Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister here, uh, Cycle with Max, uh, here in the series I do to help people get more out of their cycling experience and today we're doing uh, a changeover on a Wahoo kicker and this would apply to pretty much any of the Wahoo branded trainers to convert one over from a road bike to a mountain bike. So uh, there's some things you'll have to order in advance. Um, the Particularly, uh, well, if you're going to use a SRAM drivetrain, um, very popular nowadays on mountain bikes, uh, you'll need a particular driver called an XD driver. So if you have an 11 or 12 speed SRAM drivetrain on your mountain bike, you'll have to buy this particular part. Uh, uh, also, there's some new Shimano uh, particular <coughs> uh, free up bodies that, that, you know, for the latest, greatest Shimano stuff. So check and make sure that the free up body on your Wahoo Kicker is compatible and if not, make sure you have it in hand. The other thing you'll need is the adapter parts. You'll need to know what your rear hub spacing is. Uh, so a lot of mountain bikes up, you know, kind of in until around 2017 and 18 were 142 millimeters axle spacing, dropout spacing. After that, the new platform called Boost, if your bike is a Boost platform, is going to be 148 millimeters. So, uh, in the bag with the Wahoo stuff is a bunch of spacers and stuff. Uh, some are marked, most aren't. Figuring it out is extremely challenging. It will not in any way be obvious, but I'm sure I'm here to kind of help you sort through that and just show you so that you don't have to try and figure it out. We are going to be putting a Boost bike on, a a 2018 S-Works hardtail, uh, epic hardtail. So <clears throat> the first step you'll need to do is remove whatever cassette is on your bike. There's one bazillion, bazillion, jillion videos on how to remove a cassette. I'm not gonna go into that. You do need a cassette tool, some sort of either chain whip or a new modern cassette pliers. Take the nut off the end, uh, and, that's, and then remove the cassette. Uh, removing the Freya body, uh, should be easy, but it's not. I've done, I have several Wahoo kickers. Uh, you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench or some sort of nice tool like these Nipex uh, um, lever locking pliers. You're going to remove the nut that holds the Freya body on. It, it screws and threads in a normal direction just like any other um, nut or bolt in the world. The problem is uh, this should just slide off. If you're lucky, it does. All my kickers are new but some of them there's rust on the bearings inside of them even when they're brand new so they get stuck so you're going to start with this tiny with this thin tiny screwdriver put it in between the freo body pry it very gently like if it doesn't want to move stop but i'm just applying gently and i'm turning it in quarter turn increments until my little screwdriver i'm going to start twisting it when it runs out of range i'm going to go to a bigger one okay now you'll start to see teeth appear. You don't necessarily want to pry anywhere around teeth, okay? So make sure you, you're not prying around the teeth. So I'm just using bigger screwdrivers and I'm twisting them, uh, which gives you better leverage, right? Now I'm gonna see if I can't pull on it from here. Okay, and I can. So what happens is these, this inner bearing rusts and it gets corrosion on it um, and I don't know if it's just there's humidity at the factory when they're assembled, but um, you know my our area here is air conditioned and climate controlled, so I don't know why these bearings corrode, but they do. All right, uh, behind here is a little spacer. You're gonna want to leave that in place. Okay, so that's that's off now. Uh, you got your new Freya body. You're gonna want to put some grease around those gears. Each of their four. Uh, they're called Pauls, P-A-W-L-S, but, uh, you know, for layman's terms, we're going to call them gears. Uh, there will be grease already in the teeth inside the, uh, um, in the teeth inside the pulley here. Um, take a little bit of grease and just coat that whole shaft. You're not getting it sloppy with grease. You're putting a thin coating of grease, right, to keep, hopefully prevent some of this future corrosion. Now, inside these is a little spacer between two bearings. You can kind of see it might wiggle or drop around in there. Can you see that? All right. So when you put this on, 
stick your pinky in there, kind of get it aligned to get it started. Now, these can be uh, challenging to say the least. So help it with your palm. You really shouldn't be to the point where you need a hammer of any kind or mallet. Uh, so if it's that difficult, maybe check for corrosion on the shaft, you know, polish the shaft. All right, so now, little screwdriver, you're gonna find those teeth, roll this around and poke a few of them down, like lay them down against their springs and get, get it started. You're gonna keep pressure against this. You're gonna find that one or two of those is what's holding you up. They don't want to get started, so you got to keep getting them started. Okay, so I should be in there now. All right, now let's see. Hang on a second. I am going to get a little mallet just to tap with. So I'm just tapping on the edge, not on, I'm not trying to hit these threads. I'm just tapping on the edge of the frail body just because it's very, very, very tight. So I'm tapping on this edge, not trying to hit this, all right? So now I've got that on, <clears throat> that's cool. Now, for the 148 millimeter uh, setup, the piece you took off, it's 10 millimeters tall, okay? The piece you're gonna put on in the Wahoo bag of stuff is 13 millimeters tall, okay? It's a different color, this one's kind of chrome looking, this one's, the taller one is st kind of stainless looking. So you're looking for that uh, end cap. So you're gonna put that on 17 millimeter wrench, or you know, if you've got these fancy pliers like I've got, um, then you can use them. Uh, you know, this is snug is all that's required. If you're a torque maniac, you know, call Wahoo and ask them about the torque spec. Uh, this is your SRAM cassette. Uh, we have a, these are bikes we ride at Leadville. And so they have a very, not well, not well known, but super awesome drivetrain on them. It's two by 11. It gives us a crazy drive range for Leadville. So we have 36, 22 chain rings. And then we have a 1042 cassette, 11 speeds, so 22 speeds. And so right now we're doing, the reason we changed over to these bikes is we're doing a virtual challenge to climb 100,000 feet in eight weeks. So that's our challenge. All right, now this is on, we're, we're done. That side's ready to rock. This is the part, oops, I lied. Sorry, now you watch me make a mistake. Um, so this is important. Uh, uh, in the, in the bag is a little ring and you would on most bikes and most cassettes in the universe you would never put a ring but you have to put the included ring don't ask me why or where it came from so actually you get to watch me take this cassette off now uh, uh, you would never put a most for a long time you used to do this in old days when you put 10 speed cassette on 11 speed and this and that and 9 and 10 blah 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 that silver ring has to go on there or your spacing will be off. So, sorry about that. But, so, you don't make the same mistake. Uh, first time I did that, I measured it all out and found out that it was required. But I'm not. I'm so used to not putting a spacer on an XD driver that I do not forget about it. All right, now that side's done. Uh, actually, we're pretty far along. Let's clear our junk out of the way. Now, the other side. Normally, you just slip in some spacers from Wahoo. This is tricky. So, here is the spacer. When you look at this, it says 148 and 142. I don't know what they, why they not done a better job of this. There's gotta be a better way, but, so, this says, I can read 142. I would think, hey, that's wrong. Maybe I'll put it this way. Now I can read 148. I'll put it that way. That's that's wrong. So what you're gonna do is put this in 148 wider. So this needs to hang out farther. That's one of the first ways to look at it, right? This is narrower, this is wider. 
but that's still not enough. Now there's another piece, this little skinny, shiny cap. That piece also has to go over it, or it, w or it won't be wide enough. So uh, that is ready to accept the bike. Let's throw a bike on. All right. And on we go with a bike. Now, since this is all kind of floppy, I'm kind of holding the, this left side in the air, starting with the right side, and then I'm holding it with my finger and setting, the, setting it down, organizing it, because it, it's just, see how it's toggling and walk? Can you see that with the camera? Mm -hmm. See how that's all wonky? So, uh, you gotta kind of guide it and line it to get it started, because it's really not captive, and it's really not very well set up initially. So, oops, and I don't have it on this side properly. There we go. Now it's down on the dropouts. You thread your axle in. All right. Dress the right dress. Release your cassette. All right. Now we will throw on. Same thing with the kicker climb if you're using one. You, they got a whole mess of spacers in there. These are a little better marked um, and figuring them out is a no-brainer uh, on this pretty much. So they've got a mess of spacers that come with a kicker climb that will accommodate basically every bike, um, road, mountain, and all of that. So uh, here you go. Jam up. Zero your stuff. Set your thing down. And now you are ready to rock, as they say, with your mountain bike. Um, obviously check your shifting, you know, if you need to adjust any indexing or anything. But it should be very close. Um, that's how you know you got it right. Um, and this bike is pretty much ready to rock. So, there you have it. Uh, how to convert your whole Wahoo kicker setup over so that you can go mountain bike riding. Uh, so my name's Max. Don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, particularly if they want to try mountain biking on a Zwift setup and, uh, and get their mountain bike onto their Wahoo rigs. And uh, please subscribe to my channel and I'll keep this cool content coming.